So we started using those watch uh, in Bruges from September 2012, not only for those registration, but also for evaluation of our data. In fact, those watch made our doses <coughs> visible. It made the invisible visible. And uh, by doing so, we could detect some causes leading to higher radiation dose. And then actions were undertaken to reduce radiation dose. Okay. So for CT especially, we, we worked a lot on standardization and optimization of all, all our CT protocols. And we could achieve some reasonable dose reductions up to 38% for venous CT of the abdomen. So using the dose watch system, this led to a better dose management, at least at our department. But dose is, of course, one thing. Uh, dose is very important, especially for young persons coming to the CT department. But we have another health risk, and that is, of course, the administration of contrast, which uh, can lead to a even more severe and certainly more immediate a negative effect on the health and well-being of our patients, especially uh, elder patients and also patients with already uh, slightly impaired kidney function. So that is why next to uh, dose management, we also can use a tool for contrast management. Why would we want to track all our contrast data? Well, of course, to fulfill all regulatory requirements. But again, we want to make the invisible visible. We want to create vis visibility on our contrast use and procedures. This is necessary if you want to increase awareness amongst technicians and radiologists. Furthermore, we want to track and, if possible, prevent adverse events. And at the end, what we want to do is we want to deliver patient-optimized contrast volume. So that is why we started with the contrast watch in June 2015. It's fully integrated in the dose watch system. This only means that now we don't only send a dose report, but also a contrast report to the dose watch server and also to the facts. And this is an example of such a, a contrast report that you can find nowadays on our fax system. And when you open the dose watch page, you can see that for all performed studies, all performed CT scans, you can find, of course, the dose, but you also can find uh, the administration of contrast, what type of contrast, and uh, the volume that got injected. So this is for the performed studies, but another big advantage is here for the scheduled studies. When we open the CT work list and we have a patient that is known for, uh, to the system to have any risk factor at all, like a contrast allergy or impaired kidney function, automatically a warning will appear for the technician. So in, in this way, we can prevent adverse events. And then the second box here, the system gives you all recent previous injections. This means all uh, contrast injections that the patient had in uh, the last 30 days, and the cumulative iodine dose is calculated. So we started our data collecting in, uh, in June 2015, uh, but the evaluation of all our contrast injective CT protocols, we started more recently. Now, how much contrast do we, do we inject? This is, of course, different uh, for all hospitals. But in Bruges, we have our, our fixed volumes. We have our house rules. And it depends on what kind of CT you're performing. So like for a CT of the thorax, we inject 70 milliliters. Brain is 50. Abdomen and venous face thorax abdomen is 95. And all head and neck CT scans are injected 100 milliliters of contrast. Of course, all these uh, volumes can and should be adapted to patients' habitus, kidney function, and age by the technologist. By, but as we will find out, it is not always the case. But then the contrast watch helps us to visualize our contrast use. And we can make all kinds of reports and diagrams. Like here on the left side, we see the total volume of contrast that is used per specific CT protocol. And it's, of course, no surprise that the most frequently used ones well, they result in a higher total volume of contrast that's being used. But more important is uh, this diagram. Here we have a look at the injected volume <coughs> per specific CT protocol. So we see here the, the median value, and then the blue box is, uh, represents the, vari the variability in the volume that is uh, injected. So we have uh, certain CT protocols, like here that's the arterial runoff of the lower limbs, where we inject 
uh, more contrast than in others. We see a low variability here. We have even one extreme one. This is the head and neck CT scan. The, uh, all patients received 100 milliliters of contrast, so no variation at all. But then we have uh, other CT protocols. This is the CT of the coronary. Uh, bigger variability because uh, the, the volume is always adapted to, to body weight. But now let's have a look at one specific protocol. That's the venous phase CT of thorax and abdomen. It's very frequently used, as you can see here. And what are the house rules here? Well, normally we inject a fixed volume of 95 milliliters. But for patients older than 80 years or after nephrectomy, they, they should be lowered to 75 milliliters of contrast. Now, with contrast watch, we can check if our daily practice is aligned with these house rules. So we collected some data, and uh, this is our group of, uh, of patients. We see all uh, different kinds of BMIs, uh, low BMI, normal or slightly uh, higher BMI, and even patients with a very high BNI. Some uh, patients with no BMI at all. It doesn't mean that it's not measurable anymore, but because the technician didn't put in the weight and the length of the patient, so it couldn't be calculated. Now, when we look at the average volume of contrast that is injected, well, the first three groups, the first three BMI groups, there's a, there's a logic to that. It goes up with the BMI. But then something strange happens because the very uh, high BMI patients then the average volume that's injected, it goes down again, and it doesn't really make sense. We, we don't know why this, uh, this happens. When we have a look then at the percentage of the uh, injected protocols, we see that in 74% of cases, the house rule of uh, 95 milliliter uh, of contrast is injected. 24% of patients uh, get a lower volume of contrast, only 2% of them a higher volume. Maybe that's not logic also. Uh, we, we should consider uh, giving a little bit more contrast, certainly to the patient group with a high BMI. Now, is our injected volume adapted to age? Well, definitely not always. Here uh, at the bottom you see the age line, uh, 80 years of age. When we look above 80 years of age, we see that some patients get injected 75 or 70 milliliters of contrast, but a lot of them, if not most, are still injected the house rule of 95 milliliters of contrast. So here we have a lot of work to do yet. There's also a kind of a big brother side to the system. We can have a look at the individual scores of all our technicians. They are asked to put in their uh, initials when they perform a, a, a scan. As you can see, uh, it's not always followed. Uh, sometimes they, they forget to do it. And then when we look at uh, the different technicians, we see that some do a lot more CT scans than others. This doesn't mean that these ones are extremely lazy, but there are some technicians spending a lot, if not all of their work time on the CT department, while others, unfortunately, they only come in, uh, they only come to the CT department to fill in the gaps. This is, of course, not ideal, but I think that it's representative for a lot of uh, radiology departments. Now we can have a look at their uh, individual scores, and we see that, well, these four technicians, they have like the same score. They inject about 70% of times, they inject the 95 milliliter house rule, and then they tend to go down a lot in, in 25 to 30 percent of cases, only two of them dare to uh, inject a higher <coughs> volume than uh, 95 ml. But then we have other technicians like these three, no variation at all. They always inject the house rule. They never lower their contrast. And when we check the other list, we see that, well, it's no surprise. These are, of course, the least uh, experienced technicians. They, they don't dare to go as low as they're more experienced technicians. So another thing that we can we can work on. But what about image quality? Is it necessary to uh, to inject more contrast for image quality? Well, yes, we, we did some measurements. Uh, it's, it's density measurements in spleen and uh, vascular structures. Uh, and we see that in the high BMI group, uh, we tend to, to measure lower densities. We uh, we lose some enhancements, some uh, contrast in our image. Now, what have these data learned us? Well, first of all, the house rules are respected in 76% of cases. 
It's not dramatic, but there's certainly room for improvement there. It's still very operator uh, dependent. Uh, the, the more experienced technicians, they, they do better than the less experienced ones, which is, of course, no surprise. Image quality is not standardized, and certainly injected volume is not always adapted to patient age. Now, what we want to do is we want to standardize workflow and also the image quality across patients, and this we can do by administering patient-specific contrast volumes. Now, is there an easy way to do that? Well, new methods are now being de developed. We recently installed the iCalc system on our uh, Mimoto injector, and this is a clinical decision support tool which helps you to calculate the volume that you should inject in your patient. So this is the interface. You just have to fill in the patient's height, body weight, the heart rate, the contrast medium you're using, and then uh, with this simple rule that you need 45 milliliters per square meter of body surface of the patient, the, uh, the iCalc proposes you a volume of contrast that you should inject. So we, we tested this iCalc. Um, uh, the thing on our uh, Mimoto, and uh, we compared it to our house rule. So we had two groups of patients. First, I, I would call this the house rule group, and then we have a second group of patients who had the iCal proposed volume injection. All patients were scanned on the same scanner using the same contrast, and we did some, but I must be honest, not enough quantitative image quality analysis up to now. Now, when we look at our patient population, we see the same uh, patients with a low BMI, normal to uh, slightly uh, higher and very high BMI. <coughs> and when we look at the volumes that got injected by the alcalc, we see that certainly when compared to this house rule group, we see that there's a more logical spread of the volumes. It goes up with BMI, which one would expect, and this is definitely not the case for our house rule group. Now, how much does the, the iCalc inject? There are, of course, high variabilities. Uh, some patients get injected up to 131 cc of contrast. Maybe we should consider uh, putting in a, a maximum of like 120 or 125. But we also have for, for smaller patients with a, with a low BMI, we have uh, a, a, less, a lot less contrast than our 95 milliliter house rule. However, Maybe our rule wasn't that bad because it stays uh, right in the middle of everything. Then we also had a look at the image quality. We did some density measurements, like here in the spleen. Now when we have a look at the iCal group, we see that the density measured, even for the high BMIs, it, it stays in the same range. There's a lower variability here when compared to the house rule group. The same for vena porta but uh, here the ICOL group is here. So uh, we have a lower variability when compared to the house rule group. So it helps you to, to ha get a more homogeneous enhancement. Now we're, of course, well, some of you are radiologists, I guess. Uh, we want to see some images. And when you look at uh, these two images, it's the same patient scanned uh, with in October and January. Uh, here, the house rule was followed, although it wasn't followed at all. They injected 100 milliliter. I don't know why, because the BMI is ra rather low, but he got injected 100 milliliter. The iCalc proposed uh, 73 milliliters, um, but the densities we're measuring in spleen and uh, portal vein, they are still uh, quite similar. So they're, they're not definitely not worse on the uh, iCalc image. But then also for a a patient with a very high BMI. He was scanned in January uh, with uh, the house rule, the 95 milliliters. ICAL proposed 108 milliliters. And you can definitely see that there is a slightly better enhancement in spleen and certainly in the vascular structure. But do we need this? Do we need this image quality? Do we need this enhancement? That's, of course, a difficult question to answer. Because image quality is, of course, uh, influenced by a lot of factors. Of course, patient habitus, the volume of contrast, the speed rate of the injection of the contrast, and the heart rate. 
but that is all taken into account by the IPAL. But there are a lot of other things like heart function, quality of venous access, certainly dose and scanning parameters like uh, KV, and coexisting pathologies. And those are, of course, not taken into account by the IPAL. IPAL. So how low can we go with our contrast? Well, I think it's, it's different for everybody. It's, it's up to you to decide. To my opinion, we can lower the 45 milliliter per square meter body surface rule, maybe not for all patients, uh, but certainly for certain groups of patients. We definitely need more and more specific injection protocols for different groups like people, people with uh, impaired kidney function or low cardiac output, because at the end, we want a tool that helps us to create an optimal enhancement and an optimal image quality per injected millimeter, milliliter of contrast. So in conclusion, I think we can say that contrast watch, at least in Bruges, is a very useful tool for our contrast management. It makes your contrast use visible. It makes the invisible visible. It can help you a lot for the optimization and standardization of all contrast injected CT protocols. It can help you with tracking and prevention of adverse events. And with new tools like the iCal that are now being uh, developed, we, we will be able to deliver patient-specific contrast values.